two minutes is good. So I am going to put away my register and let's make a start. Do make use of the chat button. I've got that open on my screen at the moment. So we're going to the whole, the three week series here is about making our own vases or containers. So whether they're containers for fresh flowers, for silk flowers, or we want to pot flowers up into them. And I think the thing, the project I'm going to show you today would actually look quite nice with herbs potted up. So either if you've got them in the garden or if you're going for your next supermarket shop and you, you know, you're buying potted mint or potted basil, I think this would look really great in the container that we're going to be using today. I have been really strict with myself and I've only used what I've already got at home because I know we, there's nothing worse than you go to a workshop and you have to buy all this specialist equipment. So I have been really strict with myself and I've only used what I've already got at home. Uh, I will send you a buying list afterwards, an ingredients list, and I can point you in the directions of some of the added extras you might want to get in if you want to. But the whole point of the course is in recognising that we're all staying at home and we haven't got the, the freedom to go off and buy this, that and the other from all over the place. So I'm hoping that somewhere in your cupboard, you have a tin can. So this, I've got a can of tomatoes. Farah, who was going to join us, says that um, she has got some huge cans. She lives in Spain and she's got huge cans of tomatoes and I'm really quite jealous of that. So it's a simple can, it, you know, baked beans, your choice. And the only thing I have done is I've specifically chosen the one that's got the little ring pull in it. Because I think that when you pull that back, you don't get such an obvious cut edge as if when you were using the traditional can opener. But I will say, that um, the edge of the container is still sharp. So this is one for us to do as grown-ups. It's not a toy, it's not, you know, you've got young children or grandchildren around, it's an item of decorative interest and it's not to be played with, just a health and safety warning really, because I'm conscious that you may well, you know, hopefully you don't cut yourself, but it is a sharpish edge or it's not as jaggedly sharp as if you were using um, a traditional can opener. So the first thing you need to do is to take your label off and you'll find that the labels here, I've got a paper label on and it's glued down at the edge. So in my best Blue Peter style, I have taken the can off, the, the paper off, sorry. It's a bit shiny, glary there. But can you see you're left with these little bits of tacky glue? It's a bit like when you take your jam jar label off. So you either need to properly soak your can or you need to get out, um, my favourite for getting rid of the yucky mess is to use white spirit. And it works really well on jam jar labels too. So it's a bit like taking your nail varnish off, you will need to use your white spirit and either rub away or, and do this in a well ventilated room. I quite like the smell of white spirit, but it may cause you a slight irritant. So open the doors and windows and you can either sit there rubbing away or let it soak in for a little while. And then you can scrape it off with your fingertips or um, get a knife out if you want to scratch it away with a knife. Anyway, I won't show you how to do that in detail. You get the idea. But eventually you end up with a tin can, which actually by itself is quite a decorative item. And I've actually got a plant pot that looks like it's a ceramic version of a tin can. So you may decide that's all you want to do is to soak your label off and you can have use bare tin cans. So um, I did show this picture of what we we're going to do to my sister yesterday. And she then messaged me back another photograph and she uses her tin cans as nightlight holders and they were outside and they've got a lovely rusty patina to them. So it may be that you want to clean a can up and just leave it outside so it goes a lovely natural colour. Or if you want it to look aged, the old trick of painting yoghurt onto your tin can and letting them the sort of mould grow so you get rid of the, the bright, shiny metal there. But I've decided that I want to paint my can and you can use spray paint if you've got it. And what I ended up doing, I have done a bit of spray painting and I've also used a bit of um, satin wood gloss. So you'd take your paint and you'd slap it on. But I did notice with the proper decorating paint that said you had to prime the surface to begin with. So if you happen to have any PVA glue, you can use that as a primer, first of all. So we are, um, we've got loads of PVA glue at home because my daughter was really into making slime. 
and that's the vital ingredient. And what I did is I poured a little bit of that into a cup, I watered it down very slightly, and then painted that onto my tin can, washed the brush up because I needed that to add in my layer of paint, I just left it to dry. And um, it still felt a little bit tacky, but perhaps that's the point of priming, as you then paint your paint on, that um, it's, it adheres, it sticks properly, so it's like a proper undercoat. And you probably will need to do more than one coat. Now, the issue I had with using the, um, the, the Dulux paint was it then, I read the label and it said, allow 16 hours to dry between coats. So this isn't necessarily a quick DIY, it's a simple DIY, but you, if you want to have a lovely paint finish, you need to make sure that, um, that uh, you're, you're, I'm distracted by the comments. I should just say hello, Farah, and get out of the way. Um, that you need to, if you want a really good paint finish, make sure your paint dries between the layers is what I'm trying to say. You may find that you've got spray paint, and in which case use a, vent, a well ventilated room, different shake. I tend to do this out in the garden. And what I do, you'll find that you'll, if you've got spray paint, it sprays everywhere. So I would put my tin can into a box if you've got it. You know, if you're going home delivery crazy, you may well have a cardboard box and I'd spray into the box just to contain the, the fumes. And again, make sure you do it in a well-ventilated room. That is a fast option, but again, you may need to have more than one coat and you can't apply one coat really thickly. You have to do a light coat, but it does dry very quickly. So you can come back and it's sort of a thing, I if I'm spray painting, I tend to do it outside of my patio table. And I get my can out and I go, shh, shh, shh. and I go out and five minutes later, I come back and do another shh, shh, shh. And then you'll end up with a can. Can you see that? I've, I've, I was quite clever here with my before and after. So I've got my nude can and then my painted can here. You'll end up with a can that's got paint on it. And then the idea then is that I want to make this look like a little enamel pot. You know the enamelware? I'll show you an enamelware mug in the moment. And this is all very farmhouse style. So uh, a, a trend at the moment it's really big on pinterest it's lots of white um white decor with some black accent details in them and i've decided to go for an, an enamel look on my tin can so over in my pot here i will show you the inspiration so that's my little enamel mug i've got a little camping mug so i thought i've got my tin can there I, if I put a blue rim around the top, it'll add to that theme. And one of the ways you can do this is to use a permanent marker to do it. So I have to turn this towards me so I can show you what I'm doing. That if you've got a permanent marker, and I did think afterwards, so again, I'm not quite sure you can see that, but I will show you a closer up picture at the end. Possibly if you've got nail varnish, I think nail varnish would be quite a good idea depending on what colours you've got. I mean, you don't have to stick with the traditional blue and white. You could go for you know, a red or whatever colour you've got. It's about using creatively what you've already got. So again, that's not, you can just see, I think, a little bit of a flash of blue around the edge. And then to develop the idea even further, but I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I then made this into a little bucket and put a handle on the top? So shall I show you, before we go step by step through what I'm going to do, I'll show you the finished item so you don't have to suspend your, your imagination for too long. So that is my finished little pot. I don't know if it helps I bring it closer. So you can see it's a white pot with blue trim. I actually did my blue trim here with acrylic paint because it's what I had to hand and I will say that using acrylic paint it's it's washable so it's not going to stay on forever which is why I underline again this is a decorative item it's not going to be a really hard wearing forever to be used um, little item it looks really really pretty and what I would do is it's all about faking it up really with floristry and being creative. Because if I wash, you need to wash out your vases as you know, because you don't want them getting gunky and you want to keep your flowers living for as long as possible. And normally we would be perhaps quite hard wearing with our, with our vases. You might be putting bleach in it. 
you know, you're scrubbing it around, you might be putting your containers in the dishwasher. If I did this in the dishwasher, everything's just going to peel straight off. So I'm going to use a little vase insert. So this is a can of tomatoes. That's a can of a jar of pesto sauce. And luckily for me, it just fits in. So I'm going to use that insert so I don't need to actually wash my can. I will just need to give it a damp cloth over as and when it needed. And therefore it doesn't matter that I've used acrylic paint or the marker pen because they're not going to be rubbed and scrubbed. And what I'll show you on the side here, can you see the way, that I've, and I'm going to be quite careful with this, because again, it's built for looks, not necessarily for longevity, but as there's nothing in it, I think I can probably get away with carrying it towards you. Can you see what the little fixing is when I've created this little handle? It's a piece of string at the top. So I've used my string from my regular Freddy's flowers delivery. We've all got a piece of string in the kitchen drawer. So hopefully that won't be too difficult to find. But can you see what I've used to make the little, um, I'm not quite sure what that's called, a hinge or a, we just call it a fixing for little bucket here. So while you're pondering that, I will show you what it is. So a um, piece of string in my bath there. And have you guessed yet what it is? It's the ring pull on a drinks can. So I've been doing my duty and serving my husband up lots of beer over the last few days that I can save the drinks can. And with a bit of wobbling to and fro they do come off normally they come off with a little tab on the end you need to get rid of that tab i quite liked the idea of using those and what i have done is i have hot glued them onto the side of my can to create the fixing now a word of caution um i'm advised by my daughter who's doing design and tech but it's, you can't glue metal and metal together. You have to have one material that is slightly more porous than the other in order to allow it to stick. So whereas that has been stuck on with hot glue, again, it's not, it's not load bearing. This is about creating a pretty look and you will have to do your own research about what glue is best for you. So you can get all sorts of glues. You, you know, the, the Gorilla Glue, which I think is the latest, is that the latest sort of version of super glue? That might work, but it's, it'll be trial and error. But ultimately, all I've got at home is a hot glue gun. So that is what I am using. So again, taking care with a hot glue gun because it's hot, I will glue on a splodge of foam. You have, you'll have to see, I'm sure you can imagine what I'm doing here. There is a splodge of glue. I'm not quite sure you can see that anyway. And I will take my ring pull and hold it on like that. And it will, it'll stick really quickly, but you will get these little stringy hairs that you'll need to pull off afterwards. And I have, if I do it that way around, I have positioned it so that the, um, the, the biggest hole is just sitting proud of the rim of my container, like so. And then add in the other one directly opposite. So more hot glue. And the next ring pull there. So you can see, I quite like the look of that. And you can imagine, even if you didn't have any paint, you could make yourself a galvanized bucket with no paint or a enamel bucket if you decide to paint the edges and a really pretty enamel bucket if you decide to do the trim detail with the, um, the blue on there, it shows up a bit better with the paint. I did find as well, the paint was in a more intense color. And I think part of the reason for that is that the, the satin wood gloss I was using had, had a glossy texture by nature. And I just think my pen couldn't cope with going on a, you know, a quite a slick surface. So if you've got chalk paint or perhaps even emulsion, you might find that your pen keys in better. So, it's, it's about trial and error. I mean, I'm giving you the ideas that you can go on and discover more over the next week, rather than necessarily saying, this is exactly how you're going to do it. And of course, if you haven't got these materials, you're going to have to adapt a little bit and be um, a bit inventive. So it's going to be a bit of brain work for you as well. And then what to have to hand, I thought, well, I'll go for something rustic, which is where I put my string in. And I decided in the end to do a double cord of string there because I found a single length of string just to look a bit insignificant. Again, it's entirely up to you 
what you decide to do. So I might actually do this one slightly differently. Thread it through the holes. I'm going to tie um, a knot on this side, a double knot. Don't look closely. I don't think it's a reef knot. I think we have gone for a granny. And then decide how long you want the handle. Because it's string, it's not necessarily going to stand up in a very upright position. It may be that you want it designed so it has a nice drape hanging down. And if you don't have string, use what you've got. This could be an old shoelace. It could be um, a piece of ribbon. I'm always talking about these bits of ribbon. Have I got one on today? You know, in your shirts, I don't think I've got one on. That bit of ribbon that you have on your shirts to hang up, I, I tend to cut those off and use those for craft projects. Or if, if, you, if you collect ribbons, you know, from when gift wrapping and things like that, or even wool, you could be plaiting wool, anything you've got to hand. But I'm embracing this, um, this sort of very traditional homespun farmhouse style for my tin like so. And you can see it is holding up because there's nothing in my tin can. The tin can is quite light, but as soon as I put, you know, water in there or I put a pot plant in there, it's really going to put pressure on here. And it may even be just for you moving it to one position to the other, you may find these fixings fall off. So I'm not guaranteeing any longevity to your container, but I will say, and I've had this confirmed by my daughter, that she said, oh mum, that looks quite nice from a distance. She said it didn't look quite so good close up. So, uh, you know, just to let your friends admire things from a, you know, from a good two, two metre distance, because we're having to keep socially separated. Um, it, it's, the fun of the idea and the being creative, I'm not saying this is going to be the most longest lasting bit of um, creative crafting that you have ever done. Now, I'm then going to show you the thing I think makes this whole little container look really, really great. And that's the wording on it. I'm not quite sure whether that's the wrong way around for you. It says fresh cut flowers on it. So if you were really good at writing, you could take out your marker pen and you could be writing freehand on your container. The other way of doing it is to make your own um, uh, carbon paper. I don't know if you've got carbon paper at home, I certainly don't, but do you remember when you were at school and you wanted to do transfers, you used to trace things out of your exercise book, turn it over and rub on the back, which was like putting the carbon on the back, and then putting it the right way around and tracing over it, and that will give you a pencil outline if you wanted to perfect your writing and you could then follow that tracing and go over that with a marker pen. And if you thought your writing wasn't neat, you could always um, type something up on your computer and then put a piece of paper over your computer screen and trace it off that and then go forward. So you'll have to let me know. I can remember doing that as a child. I've not done it recently. So that might be something you might want to have a go at and then report back to me to see how well it worked. Now, what I did here is I use this and I've got, um, if you've been following me for a while, you would have heard me talking about my Cricut machine. And that's a machine where I've done this on my laptop and it prints out a vinyl label. So I've actually got one of these labels to show you. And again, I'm quite sure that does say fresh flowers and it I have to prepare it a little bit so it comes out of the computer I've taken away all the backing and it's a matter of rubbing and scrubbing across here I then peel off the backing paper and this is the oh it's not quite working don't ever do this on live telly but it's the same sort of principle it's the more modern version of doing the carbon paper thing I don't think that's going to work. I'm under pressure, ladies. So I'm using a scraper. This could be a credit card. And I'm trying to get the lettering to stick onto the artwork now, onto the transfer paper. Can you see that's come off like that? And then if I hold that up to my can, I'll just do it facing me so I can see where I'm going. I can then put that on my can and use my scraper again to scrape on and making sure here that I'm going through the ribs, the ridged um, detail of the, of the tin can. And that'll be the difficulty if you decide to do writing freehand. 
is that you will need to compensate for the little groove that you've got there. So in an ideal world, I would be looking for a tin can if you wanted to add words to it that had a band around it. I'm sure sometimes they do when they don't have that, um, the, the ribbing all the way down. Sometimes I think they have a, a strip through. So you'll need to be, when you're going to the supermarket, being really careful about your selection of tin cans and a smooth can would be um, much easier to work with if you are planning to freehand some um, text onto it or not. And I will just, that's not going to work. Um, but if I had more time to show you, I would then, having put that on, would be, oh, is coming. I won't do all of it. But can you see that as I peel off the transfer paper, it's starting to come off? And it's transferred down. So I would then peel it all off, and if it looked like the label letters were sticking, I would go back and rub it on again. And that is how I have ended up with that on the label, which I think looks well. I think it looks really, really good, personally. So the next thing is to add flowers, and what I will do, you know, you need to add water into your container. And I think this is the trick: it is you will make your little having put the effort in to make your container to up upcycle your tin can it'll last longer if you treat it kindly. So treat it with respect. And I think the jam jar insert is the way to go personally. And just around the corner, I'm going to lean around. I've got some, some flowers that I have um, been picking on my daily walks. So I have foraged with these. So just a health warning about foraging, that you shouldn't be picking without consent. You shouldn't be picking from any protected wildlife sites or any other designated sites. You should um, also know what you're picking as well to be aware that there are things that may well be poisonous if ingested, but also may be an irritant to you. But I'm only picking what I know and um, I'm only picking what I needed as well. So you don't denude a whole place. If you've got wild bits in your garden, of course, you could go and pick wild things from your garden. And of course, you may have beautiful flowers in your garden already. But I've specifically gone with something that is quite um, naive and simplistic in style to go with my farmhouse style container. So I'm not arranging super, super sophisticated flowers because I didn't think it would look right in an enamelware container. So what I have got here, I mean, this could be really simple. There's grasses, you know, the long, the varieties. The verges, sorry, it's no mow may. So you may well find that people aren't mowing in order that the, the grasses and the flowers will bloom for our pollinators, which are vital to um, the cycle of life. So I've got grasses here. I have cow parsley, which is in season at the moment. This cow parsley was picked a week ago. It has started to drop its pollen. So it's got like a, it's almost like a semolina covering on some of my surfaces at home. Honesty, which is either a purple or white flower, but it's known for being dried and it'll eventually go white and see through with big black seeds in it. But at this stage, it's still fresh and green. And then some wild mustard, which did have white flowers on it, not dissimilar to um, the cow parsley. And what I would do on oh, this one as well, I have to show you. I don't know whether you see that a lot around you. It's a blue flower that you might, if you didn't know, think was a. Um, uh, forget me, forget me not, oh, forget that name. It's actually a green alkanet and it's a really, really vivid blue. So it's not borage and it's not um, forget me not, it's called green alkanet. And what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to sort of make a bouquet because it's supposed to be an informal arrangement. I'm just going to group these bits and pieces in my hands, making sure I'm taking anything off the stem that's going to be inside my water because I don't want it rotting and smelling. But this isn't a great feat of making the best arrangement possible it's adding an extra level of, of detail to your container so when you brag about your handiwork you've got some flowers to catch people's eyes as well also got that i don't know what that is it looks like stingy nettle but it isn't it's got no sting to it but a nice sort of downy edge so i'm grouping all these bits together i've also got some tiny bits of um honeysuckle pinching off the leaves there because they don't look very good and you just think well that looks all right in my hand chop off the ends so they come up the same length remember to add water to your container and drop them into your well actually I'm going to take them out I'm going to flick my handle over first so it's casually arranged at the front of my pot and then I'm going to 
put my flowers in and get them to react, relax. So it's just a tiny posy, an informal posy um, of flowers that kind of fit with the look of the vase. So it's not difficult to do. If you are picking cow parsley, I would advise that you sear it in hot water first. So what I do, you, you'll pick it and you'll get home and think, oh, it's, I picked this and it's all gone droopy in the 15 minutes it's taken me to walk home. Boil the kettle, put some this much water in a heat, heat proof jug, recut the ends of the uh, cow parsley and then put them into your cup or jug of hot water for 10, 15 seconds. And what it does is it encourages the stem, the, the cells to open up and take up more water and that will make your wild flowers last longer. Works really good for any delicate garden flowers as well. So before I open the floor for questions and take you off mute, I'll just show you a sort of, and what else can we do with this if you had some different materials. And I have got um, a pot here that you can see I'm quite confidently carrying. And this one I have um, finished in red because I had got some red wire. And this is, if you've been, if you're into flower arranging, and I will leave, leave a link to the wire I use, it's called aluminium wire and it comes on, um, it's circled round and it's really, really bendy. And I thought that would make a really good handle that manages to stay up on its own. So you could use that as a decorative feature. And then to try and get over the fact that I was trying to glue metal on metal with the tin can ring pull, I have glued a tiny bit of red felt onto the can. So my glue was gluing onto the felt and because the felt is porous, it was sucking up the glue. And then I glued the tin can pull to the, um, to the other side of the felt. I've made a felt sandwich basically, and I think that was going to hold it together better. Now I've just got the warning that we've got 10 minutes to go. So we'll have a race as to whether you can unmute yourself first or whether, aha, uh -huh, unmute all. I think I can do that. So the floor is open to you. 